Hey, YouTubers. Please excuse my voice. I'm just getting over a little bit of a cold. Uh, I finally got a chance to spend a couple hours with my 180 to 600 millimeter Z Nikkor lens, and uh, I'm really impressed with this guy. And so I want to share my initial impressions with you and also compare it to the F mount 200 to 500 that many of you may be using and talk a little bit about third party alternatives. Uh, I also want to compare it to some of the Nikon S mount lenses because there's a lot of great features that are in these lenses that they've carried over to this lens, even though this is not an S lens. So first of all, let me compare it to the 200 to 500. I'm going to put this away. All right. Now, you will see that the 200 to 500 millimeter with an FTZ adapter on it is about the same size as the 180 to 600 millimeter. But what you can't tell from looking at them is this is a good bit heavier. With the FTZ2 adapter, this is about 86 ounces. This is about 69 ounces. So there's a pretty considerable weight difference there. Uh, Nikon's made a number of improvements over the 200 to 500 millimeter lens with the newer 180 to 600 millimeter. Uh, for one thing, the 200 to 500 had what a lot of folks call the Viagra zoom. It's not too bad size-wise at 200 millimeter, but as soon as you start zooming it out, uh, it gets pretty long, and that creates a number of problems. For one thing, the weight shifts, and so if you've got it on a gimbal, and you zoom it out, suddenly it's a lot heavier on that end, and it's a little awkward. Also, zooming it is awkward. You see how much you have to rotate the lens to zoom that in and out. Well, the zoom on this lens is internal, and it's a quarter turn, and it's silky smooth, and the lens does not get any bigger, and that makes it so much easier to deal with and to shoot with. Uh, also, being an internal zoom, it means better weather sealing. Uh, these lenses move a lot of air internally when you zoom them in and out. And if you're in a dusty environment, it acts like a pump. And every time you zoom that in or out, you're just circulating air through the lens and it can draw in a lot of contaminants that way. And so uh, this is an uh, inexpensive way to build a lens, but it's not the best way to build a lens. And so Nikon's done a much better job with the internal zoom on the 180 to 600 millimeter. Now, zoom lenses, of course, are much more versatile than a fixed focal length lens, but usually that comes with a hit in image quality. And like I said, I haven't tried this on tracking anything moving yet, uh, but it does share the same STM type motor that is in Nikon's S mount lenses. And it's noticeably snappier focusing than the old two to 500 millimeter. So I'm really looking forward to trying this with some birds in flight and some action subjects. But so far, I've only had a chance to just shoot around the yard with it a little bit. And it's very impressive and it's much quicker to acquire focus than the old two to five. What I have seen in photographing stationary subjects, it is, it is very, very sharp. Um, here's a shot of this little chameleon lizard and uh, this is about 1x magnification, and I'll put these photos uh, at the end of the video, so stick around to the end. I'll show you these photos full frame, JPEG, straight from the camera, no editing, no cropping, and I'll crop them in a little bit so you can see the detail. But you can see the tiny little scales right around its eyelids, and I mean, I just don't know what more you could ask for out of a zoom lens than that. And because of this lens's capability, of uh, both having 600 millimeter and a fairly close focus capability, uh, it really comes in handy as a versatile all around carrying the lens for wildlife. Uh, you can photograph birds, you can photograph butterflies, you can photograph lizards and small things like that. And so I've got some examples of those that I'll share with you towards the end, so stick around. But uh, as my just walking around or always have with me nature lens, this is gonna be my new go-to. I'm really looking forward to this, and I think I'm going to get a lot of great use out of this. And whereas the old 200 to 500 millimeters sold for around $1,300 or $1,400, although it was frequently on sale, this sells for about $1,700. That's about the same price as the Sigma and Tokina whatever to 600 millimeter lens, in some cases even cheaper. So uh, I think 
that this is really going to put a huge dent in third party lens sales. Uh, because why would you buy a third party lens where you can have a Nikkor lens for the same money or even less? Uh, I really think they hit it out of the park. Um, another advantage, of course, to having a Z mount lens on a Z body is we get a control ring, which of course you don't have on the F mount lens and you get function button. Now they've got four of these buttons all around the lens here in different positions, but they all do the same function, whatever you program them to. So there's another advantage for you. Um, of course, you don't need an FTZ adapter, which more than once I've thrown the camera in my camera bag and grabbed this lens and head out and realized I forgot to grab an FTZ adapter. So I uh, don't have that to worry about anymore. The lens hood is better. I had problems. The old lens hood on the uh, two to five just twists and snaps into place, and I would occasionally have it come off when I didn't want it to. This has the same style button release that's on the 400S and 800S lens. So once that clicks into place, it's not going anywhere. There's a lot I really like about this lens. Um, for one thing, we finally have a way to attach a strap directly to the lens. Instead of with the old two to 500 millimeter, your strap went on your camera and you had 86 ounces of lens dangling off your camera's mount. I just think that's a bad idea. And so you'd have to get some kind of adapter to uh, attach a strap to the lens unless you wanted to risk damaging your lens mount. Uh, I'm really surprised Nikon would manufacture a lens this heavy and not put a strap option on it. Uh, so they did that on the 180-600. So there's yet another thing that makes this a superior lens. Now, um, everything I've said about this lens is awesome and I love it, but it's not all rainbows and unicorns. Nikon made one cost saving uh, decision that I very much disagree with. Both the 2 to 5 and the 180 to 600 have a one piece lens collar and foot. And both of them suffer from the same weaknesses. Now you loosen this knob to rotate the lens, and the rotation is not very smooth. I kind of got it right on the 400 millimeter S lens. Now, of course, it is an S lens, but this collar rotates very smoothly. So does the collar on the 800 millimeter. One knob to loosen, it rotates, and it's permanently attached to the lens. It's not going to come off. I don't like this design. It's when the weight of the lens and the weight of the camera is resting on this foot. You've got the camera on a monopod or gimbal, it's difficult to rotate the lens smoothly. You, it resists turning and it goes too far and then you have to correct it back. And after a number of corrections, you finally get it in the position you want. Um, because of that, you may be tempted to really make this knob loose. Well, now you run the risk of this thing coming off. Um, I don't like collars that detach. Um, I just think it's a bad design. This is a much better setup. The collar will never come off of this lens, no matter how much I loosen this knob. And if I want to, I can take the standard foot off and get it out of the way if I don't want to have it on there. And I can buy an aftermarket foot that gives me more options than the standard Nikon foot. This is the way all lens collars and feet should be on all lenses, in my opinion. I understand they've got to save some money on this lens, and that may be why they decided to do it this way. But I don't like the one-piece collar and foot. And on the 200 to 500, the foot is nice and wide. And so it's fairly comfortable resting in the palm of your hand like this. The foot on the 180 to 600 is too narrow here and it's uncomfortable and digs into the palm of your hand. I really think that Nikon got everything so right about this lens. The balance, the feel, the ceiling, uh, 
the image quality, the focus, everything about this is awesome. And then some bean counter decided they need to save a few bucks and, or maybe they're trying to hit a price point. And they made the decision to put this one piece removable collar and foot on here. And I really don't care for it. I'm really hoping that Lee Photo, Kirk Enterprises, really right stuff, small rigs, somebody will make a replacement collar for this that perhaps has some way of locking in place and has an Arca Swiss foot on it. I tell you, as soon as somebody comes out with one, I'm buying it because everything else about this lens is so good. It's a shame that this one part uh, was kind of cut corners on. So if you're a Z shooter, and you have a 200 to 500 millimeter or a whatever 600 millimeter third party lens and you're debating about whether or not it's worth buying the 180 to 600 millimeter if you have the budget for it i absolutely recommend this lens i think once you get your hands on it you won't want to shoot with your other lens anymore and so uh, i'm i'm so impressed with this for what you get for the money and this is going to be my new wildlife walking around lens moving forward so I've got some JPEG photos I shot here today, and these are all going to be straight from the camera to the video. No editing, no cropping, no nothing, because uh, I want you to see what this lens is capable of without any help from software editing. So let's have a look at these photos. I hope you find this helpful. Please like and subscribe.